Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about normal and log normal distributions. Now, I'm sure that you've heard and or worked with normal distributions before. Log normal distributions, as you can imagine, are very similar to, to normal distributions. And we'll spend a, a few, few slides at the end on, on that. But let's first talk about normal distribution. Uh, when folks uh, hear the normal distribution, they usually identify it with bell-shaped curve, and that's right. Um, and that bell-shaped curve is actually uh, the graph of the density function for the normal distribution. So uh, there, there's the density function. I don't suggest that you memorize that density function. I don't think that you'll uh, need to know that. Uh, but if we look at the parameters for the normal distribution, the mu and the sigma squared, they represent the same as what we have been using those uh, symbols to represent. The, the mu is the, uh, the mean of the uh, random variable capital X and the variance is uh, sigma squared. And so, uh, you know, with, uh, on the horizontal axis there, uh, the mean will actually occur at the peak of the uh, bell-shaped curve. And then we put in some, uh, some, some certain, you know, uh, values there along the x-axis there uh, that, that kind of represent how far away, how many standard deviations you are away to the right and to the left of the mean. Uh, so we'll come back to that later on uh, in this video. You're probably going to be uh, asked questions about Calculating probabilities, for instance, the uh, maybe the distribution function for the for the random variable cap x. And the first thing that we're going to do when we try to calculate probabilities involving the random variable x is we're going to introduce this transformation uh, cap z equals cap x minus mu divided by sigma. So we're going to subtract the mean from the cap x and then divide that difference uh, by the standard deviation. So let's kind of look what happens when we do that. When, when you know, for this transformation, this cap Z random variable, uh, we get an expected value when we do this. We go through the process of, of using properties of expected values. We see that we'll end up with an expected value of cap Z uh, is zero. And likewise, if we go through the properties of variance, use properties of variance to calculate the variance of cap Z, uh, the sigma in the denominator of this last expression comes out as a sigma squared. So I can think of that as a one over sigma squared. And then when I'm taking the variance of that difference, the subtracting mu is, uh, is, is not contributing anything to the variance uh, calculation. So, uh, so the, the last expression is just equal to one over sigma squared times the variance of cap sigma, but the variance of cap sigma is itself sigma squared. And so you end up with a variance of one. So this cap Z random variable, after we make this transformation, this cap Z random variable becomes a nice uh, random variable, it has a, a mean of, uh, of zero and a, and, a, and a variance of one. And so if we look along the, uh, what I have as the X axis, we can uh, transform that x-axis to a z-axis, and the peak of the uh, uh, the peak would occur at a z-value of zero, and then those marks on each side of, of of the the mean of zero, the marks on each side is representing um, you know how many standard deviations you are uh, away from this from the mean. So this cap z is is referred to as a standard normal distribution, and the notation for that is the cap n of uh, cap n parentheses zero one meaning the mean is zero and the, and the variance is one. Um, and if we look at uh, certain x values, for instance, I made this comment a couple of times already, but let's make it one more time. If I look at a cap x value of a mu plus two sigma, well, that, that cap x value is two standard deviations to the right of the mean, so it's corresponding to a z-score, uh, what's called a z-score of two. So the, uh, the mu plus two sigma as the x value would get uh, we get uh, through that through that transformation. We get a z value of two, and again, those those values are sometimes referred to as as uh, z scores. Um, okay, so what's next? We uh, oh, first of all, the the uh, the distribution for the standard normal distribution is is given to you in tabular form. Uh, it's not like you have a a closed rule formula to calculate that. You just have to look things up in a table. That's what I mean by tabular form. And on the P exam, uh, your the table will look like uh, will look like this. This is the the first part or the top part of the table that you'll get. And you can notice that um, uh, the values in the table, look at, the, uh, look at the, the first sentence there above the table. It says entries represent the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to some uh, Z score, some actual value of Z. So for instance, if we were looking for the probability that cap Z was less than or equal to uh, 0.44, then we would, we would find a Z score in the table of 0.44, uh, 
uh, we would ident identify that 0.44 value and, and, and uh, whatever value in the table corresponds to that z-score 0.44 is that probability. So in this case, we get a 0.67 as, that, uh, as the, that probability. Notice that if I was looking for the probability that cap z was greater than 0.44, then I can use properties of probabilities. Um, those events are complementary events, so the probability that cap z is greater than 0.44 is 1 minus a 0.67 or 0.33. And I can actually find probabilities like this, that z is less than or equal to 0.44 by using some of the symmetry in the, in the bell-shaped curve. So for instance, if we go back to this bell-shaped curve and I'm looking at the probability that cap z is less than or equal to, to, to a, a negative uh, 0.44, then uh, that, uh, the picture that you have, that's, that's on the screen there, I would refer to that as maybe like, as, as the left tail of the distribution. I'd say, well, that's the left tail in the distribution where the z values are less than or equal to negative 0.44. And using properties of the table, uh, I'm sorry, properties of the, of the bell-shaped curve, the area in the left tail corresponding to a z value of a negative 0.44 would be the same as the area in the right tail corresponding to z values of a positive 0.44. So going back to our calculation, if I was trying to calculate the probability that cap z was less than or equal to negative 0.44, uh, I would say, well, that's the same as, as uh, that, that's the area in that left tail, which is going to be the same as the area in the right tail corresponding to cap z uh, being greater than positive 0.44, and we just did that calculation. We found that value to be a 0.33. Now, I try to pull a, a fast one over it on you here just, just now because the actual uh, inequalities, one is a strict inequality and one is a greater than or equal to, um, but because of the uh, continuous nature of the distribution, you're going to get the same uh, you'll get the same probability. The values at the endpoints won't affect the probability calculations. There's another part of the table that's important, and, and uh, down at the lower part of the table, I'll put that in uh, on the screen now. In this slide, you'll see uh, they have a part where they say values of z for selected uh, values of a, of a probability. So, for instance, if we were looking for the 90th percentile of the random variable cap z, what we would what we would have to do is find the value of 0.9 within the the array and and i would i would recognize that the value of 0.9 would be between a 1.28 value uh with a z-score of 1.28 i get a probability there of a one point i'm sorry of a of a point uh what is that uh 8997 and with probability i'm sorry with a z-score of 1.29 i'd get a probability uh that that z is less than or equal to one point to nine would be 0 0.9015. So uh, the, the 90th percentile would be somewhere between those two values, but instead of trying to interpolate in between those two values ourselves, they actually give us that value in this bottom part of the table. So if you're wanting to, if you need to use the 90th percentile of the random variable cap Z, the, again, cap Z being the standard normal distribution, you shouldn't try to interpolate to get these uh, to get these percentiles. Use the values that are in the table. So I would use uh, 1.282 as the uh, as the value of that 90th percentile. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples. The first example is uh, the time and minutes required to complete a certain test follows a normal distribution with a mean of 45 and a standard deviation of 10. And let's determine the probability that someone taking this test chosen at random will complete the test in less than 50 minutes. So I'm given that the time it takes to in minutes to, to complete the test is a normal distribution. Uh, mu is 45, sigma squared. I got standard deviation of 10. That's going to imply sigma squared is, is uh, that's, that's the sigma value, 10. So sigma squared is 100. So I'd identify this, or write this as a normal distribution with a mu of 45 and a sigma squared equals 100. And I seek the probability that uh, cap T is less than 50. So the first thing I would do is you know, use the transformation uh, that, that we had before. In other words, uh, subtract from both sides of that inequality, cap T less than 50, subtract the mean of the, uh, of the, of the distribution, of the normal distribution, and then divide by the uh, standard deviation. So I'm going to subtract uh, 45 and divide by 10 on the right-hand side. I just do it symbolically on the left-hand side. This process, by the way, is called standardizing the normal distribution because what I get on the left-hand side of this last inequality is just the standard normal distribution. Uh, that's what we've been, been discussing. That's how you, 
you're, you're going to, you know, that transformation is a way of standardizing a normal distribution so that you get the standard normal distribution where the mean is zero and the variance is one, and then I can use the tables that I'm given. So now I'm looking for the probability that the standard normal distribution, cap Z, is uh, less than or equal to 0.5. So I go to the tables and I identify or find, find 0.50 in the table, and uh, what's the corresponding, look for the corresponding probability. It's, what, 0.6815, I'm sorry, 0.6915, so my probability there is, is uh, 0.6915. Let's look at one more example. This is actually an example that comes from the uh, exam P sample questions. It says the company's annual profit in billions has a normal distribution with variance equal to the cube of its mean. The probability of an annual loss is 5%. Let's calculate the company's expected annual profit. So let's uh, first develop some notation. Uh, first, for the company's annual profit, let's use a cap R for that random variable. And I'm told that it's a normal distribution. So I'll just use the general parameters, mu and sigma squared. Uh, but then I'm, uh, I, and I want to calculate the, the expected annual profit. So the expected annual profit be the expected value of that random variable, which is the mu value. So the, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking the mu value here. Uh, I'm also told that the variance is equal to the cube of its mean. So sigma squared is equal to a mu cube. Uh, so I'm given that. And that's going to imply when you take the square root of both sides that sigma, the standard deviation, would just be mu to the uh, 3 halves power or 1.5 power. Then I'm told, uh, well, I'm told some more information. The probability of an annual loss is 5%. So 5% or 0 0.05 would be the probability of an annual loss. Well, a loss occurs when the profit is less than zero. So this is, uh, you know, we, we refer to or we would interpret that, that mathematically as the probability that cap R is less than zero. Now, cap R is a random variable. Uh, yeah, cap R is a, uh, is a normal distribution. It follows a normal distribution, but it's not, it's not a standard. I need to standardize it. So let's subtract the mean, divide, by the, uh, divide that difference by the, the standard deviation to standardize uh, the random variable. And then on the left-hand side of this last inequality, I get the standard normal distribution that we refer, we've been referring to as cap Z. And on the right-hand side, I get uh, uh, minus mu substitute in a, a mu to the 1.5 for sigma, and, and I get that expression that you see there. And then just uh, uh, little uh, properties of exponents, uh, uh, cancel the mu in the numerator with one of the 1.5 mu's in the denominator, it leaves me with another 0 0.5 mu's in the denominator. So I'm looking at uh, the probability that cap Z is less than um, a, a minus one over, uh, I can use I'll just use some radical notations. Uh, minus one over the square root of, of mu is what I would get on the on the uh, you know for that probability. Okay, so now let's think back though the the probability that cap z is less than a negative uh, value that's going to be an area in that's going to be a, a left tail calculation probability or an area in the left tail. And I can use the fact that the area in the left tail is going to be equal to the corresponding area in the right tail. So the probability that cap Z is less than a negative 1 over the square root of, uh, of mu is the same as the probability that cap Z is greater than a positive 1 over the square root of mu. And that is, is given to me as a 0 0.05. And now let's look at the complementary event. Uh, that uh, that cap Z is less than or equal to 1 over the square root of mu, and that probability, because of rules with complementary events, that probability would be 0.95. In other words, what that's telling me is that, that the value 1 over the square root of mu there is the 95th percentile of the standard normal distribution. So I go to the tables there, and I look at the bottom part of the table. I, I find the 95th percentile. See, that's a 1.645. So this 1 over the square root of mu is a 1.645, and solving for mu, I would get uh, this 0.36954 number uh, as, as mu, and that's the value I see. What's the company's expected annual profit? It would be uh, 0.36954, but that number is in billions, uh, so uh, that, that number would be what, like 369 million, uh, a 369 million number. Okay, I mentioned that we were going to talk about log normal distribution, so let's let's discuss that. The notation I'm going to use here is I'll put a cap L in front of the cap N, uh, so that's a cap X is following a log normal distribution. And what this means is that cap X is is an e to the 
uh, to the y power, it, 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 cap x is e raised to a, uh, a random variable that's following a normal distribution. So I'll, I'll use a cap y for that. Uh, for that. Uh, now, the normal distribution, remember that's that bell-shaped curve, the values of a normal distribution can be anything, can be anything from minus infinity to infinity. Uh, but when you take e raised to any of those powers, you're going to get positive values. Even e raised to a negative power is 1 over e raised to that, the, the positive of that power. It's still positive. So the support of a log normal distribution is going to be from 0 to infinity. And also notice that uh, in that uh, in the equation where I have cap x is equal to e to the cap y, I could take the ln of both sides. And when I take the ln of uh, of cap x uh, on the on the right hand side, I will get the ln of e to the y, which is just y. And this is just saying that the ln of cap x follows a normal distribution. So when x is a log normal distribution, the ln of cap x is a normal distribution uh, with the parameters mu and, and sigma squared. We use the same parameters mu and sigma squared. Now we can, we can actually graph, uh, graph this thing. Uh, it, it has a density function and uh, uh, we can graph it, but uh, that's what the graph is. I have the density function shown, but I don't, I don't suggest that you memorize the density function. You're not going to need to know that. Um, if you want to memorize on uh, the, the, the moments, uh, uh, the formula for the moments, you can, so that if you were asked, uh, if, if you got, if you were unfortunate enough to get a question where you were asked something about maybe the variance of a log normal distribution, uh, if you happen to remember the, the, the formula for the moments, you can take the second moment here using k equal 2 and subtract off the, the square of the first moment. Uh, I, I don't think that uh, you're, 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 you're probably more likely to be asked a question on a probability. But again, I wanted to put in the formula for the moments right there because uh, I don't think it's a very hard formula to memorize. And um, it, it's, it's easy to apply if, you'll, uh, if, you, uh, if you get that question and you know this, this, these formulas, then uh, you're, you know, it's, not a hard, it's not a hard question to answer. If you don't know the formulas, then... Uh, for the for the for the uh, moments there, then it might be kind of a uh, well. I would skip it if you don't know the formula. The formulas there. Uh, again, you're probably most likely to to be asked to calculate a probability, like I have shown here. What's the probability that cap x is less than some value? And so what you do is is uh, use the, uh, the 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 relation here that cap x is equal to an e to the y. So when I plug in an e to the y for cap x, and then take the ln of both sides, then I get a probability that cap y is less than uh, the ln of x. And I know that cap y is following a normal distribution, so I go through the process of standardizing that normal distribution uh, with with cap y, and, uh, and and then just follow the same process that we have been doing. So let's look at at a a final example here. Let's suppose that uh, y is equal to e to the cap x, where cap x follows a normal distribution with a mean of 4 and a standard deviation of 0.25, and we seek the value of, uh, we seek the probability that cap y is less than uh, 50. Because y is e, cap y in this case is e to the cap x, cap y is the one that's following a, nor, a log normal distribution. It's log normal with, with a mean of 4 and a, uh, I gave the standard deviation, so the variance is the square of that standard deviation. The variance is 0.25 squared. I seek the value of, of the probability that, that cap y is less than 50. And so I'll take the ln of both sides. And, and when I take the ln of both sides, I've got the probability that the ln of cap y is less than, less than the ln of 50. The ln of cap y is, this, uh, is cap x, which is following its, the, the, normal dis, the normal, not log normal, but normal distribution with a mean of 4 and a, and a, a, a variance of 0.25 squared. So now uh, I'm back to the same type problem before. I want to standardize uh, the, the, the cap x. Uh, the cap x is a non-standard normal distribution. I want to standardize it by subtracting the mean divided by the sta uh, standard deviation. And, and on the right-hand side, then, I get uh, ln of 50 minus 4, uh, that difference divided by 0.25, which ends up being just a negative 0.35 one number. Now that's the area in the left tail, so then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, reverse the inequality and, and say, well, and, and change the sign from a negative 0 0.351 to a positive, uh, because that will be the area in the right tail. But then I need to take, I need to use the probability 
probability of complementary events and, and, and write this probability as one minus the probability that cap Z is less than or equal to 0.351 because of how the values in the table are given to me. I go to the table and I, I, I recognize again that the table has given me values that the random variable cap Z is less than or equal to some some value of uh, for some z-score, some positive z-score. And in this case, let me back up, and I'll, 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 I'm looking now for the probability, that last probability that cap z is less than or equal to 0.351. So I uh, identify, uh, just round off 0.351, just round it off to two decimal places, the 0.35, and under the 0.35, I see the uh, 0.6368 number. So I plug that in for that probability, and I see that, um, my, my, my answer then is 1 minus the 0.6368, which is a 0.3632. Uh, okay, so that does it for um, uh, normal and log normal distributions. Uh, so I'll see you in the next video.